Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'd like to welcome everyone to the Mesa City Council study session for October the 13th. Council Member Thompson is not with us this morning. All other council members are present. Uh, item one on our agenda is to review the agenda we have for our Monday, October the 17th meeting. So if you could please refer to that document. Mr. Brady, is there anything you know that you want uh, staff to update us on on that document? Item 6E will be removed from the agenda. 6E? E. All right. Um, and I also wanted to share with council, I apologize, I can't find it right now. There's an item here procuring the uh, contractor for City Hall to be part of the um, preliminary design work. Uh, but we also want to uh, present to council kind of an updated version of the uh, design. And so right. um, Vince will be here on Monday after our study session before the council meeting to um, go through that with council. So uh, there's an agenda item on our meeting today. Yeah. Is that, are we going to do that Monday instead of today? No, it's just I'm just well, that's because a, that's it's a, a city hall item. I want you to know that we're also going to be presenting to you um, an update on the design work that's being done that's okay. been done up to date. This is just the contract to bring the uh, contractor on board. Oops, I didn't yeah. Okay. I'm, well, I, now that I read it, I think it says item two A will be on Monday night study session. So I think what was originally agendized for this study session is going to be on Monday's study right. session to get an update on yes, the city right. hall. Thank is you. that right? Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that. There was a good article in the uh, Republic today about that topic. If anyone's curious, with some uh, some renderings that were looked good. Anything. Mr. Bird, anything else on Monday's agenda that you want to highlight? A lot of good things. Um, not, nothing specific, okay. but if there's any questions. Mr. Freeman, I know, has something. On 7B, on the short-term rentals, has there been any changes to that ordinance or opening? I mean, we're still... From we talked about. Okay, there hasn't been any... Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council, any other questions about Monday's agenda? I have a question on item 5C regarding the CARES dollars, the $6 million, and the allocation on that. We have some money going to Child Crisis a Group Home for Foster Youth. Is that actually a new home, or is that for services, or what kind of things were we able to achieve with that half million dollars? Good morning, Council, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor. Um, that is for services at one of their existing shelters. So they serve um, children in the foster care system, so would otherwise be homeless children. So is this increasing their capacity or just maintaining? Their um, it can increase their capacity. It can help get kiddos through the system faster into their facility. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Council, any other questions for Monday night? All right, hearing none, again, item 2A on our agenda is going to be continued until Monday night's meeting. So item 2B is uh, a presentation and to provide direction on proposed changes to the Mesa zoning ordinance regarding drive-through facilities, outdoor eating areas, and temporary use permits. Rachel, everybody has an opinion on this, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> yes, they do. All right. <laughs> Okay, good morning, Mayor and Council. So today I'm gonna to be discussing some proposed text amendments to the zoning ordinance. And I just wanna note that we will be coming back at a later date to discuss the temporary use permit portion of this. So today we're just gonna be discussing outdoor eating areas and the proposed drive-through regulations. So as you are aware, over the past year, um, planning staff has been working on certain amendments to the zoning ordinance. Um, we've had um, several meetings, both with the public and with council yourselves to discuss these. So back in February and July, we came before you with these proposed amendments. We were at the um, planning and zoning board in March. We've been to our development advisory board and we've had um, three public meetings, um, both in person and virtual, and then multiple one-on-one -on -one meetings with various stakeholders and people from the industry. So the first, uh, the first proposed amendment is to our outdoor eating areas. 
And the purpose of this is really to capitalize on some of the success that we saw from the Mesa Alfresco program that was authorized with the mayor and council's um, resolution during the pandemic. Um, during this time, um, this allowed for kind of administrative review and allowance of outdoor eating areas. And it really increased opportunities for many businesses. Um, we assisted about 49 businesses and um, saw about $26,000 reinvested into Mesa's restaurants and bars. Um, so with the, with the proposed tax amendments here, we would like to continue on making this accessible to more businesses and to really enhance the aesthetics of these outdoor eating areas. So currently our regulations um, require either a special use permit or an administrative use permit in our certain zoning districts. I'll say that in the downtown district, there already is an approved special use permit that covers the entire pedestrian, downtown pedestrian overlay. Um, so those are already covered and allowed through that. Um, but then lastly, with our regulations, we currently just have very limited um, development standards to regulate the design and aesthetics of these. So what staff is recommending is to amend the zoning ordinance to allow by right in all commercial uh, zoning districts outdoor eating areas and to refine our current standards to um, enhance the design and, and guide these, these areas. Um, so these standards would address such things as the allowed materials for those barricades or the barriers for outdoor eating areas. It would address um, issues such as encroachment and how much width would be needed for pedestrian walkways and how much these eating areas can encroach into um, required landscape yards or setbacks in other zoning districts. Do you have any questions on, on this amendment? Mr. Reddy. Are we adding costs to, to these uh, changes as far as uh, additional costs that uh, folks will need it to entail, no? No, this actually will reduce it since we won't be requiring a special use permit. Um, so now these would just go through regular site plans. So that is a reduced cost to applicants. Okay, perfect. And time as well for not having to go through a public hearing. Sure. I, I have a question. There was a business that contacted me, I think a few months ago and they had a uh, they didn't want to drive through. They wanted to activate a pickup window. You know, not. And I, the distinction, I guess, is you know they weren't. You don't drive up and order the food and then pull up and pick it up. It's like you phone in or you text in in advance. But you can rather than going inside the store, you can pick it up from you know a window. Correct. Uh, is that uh, would that be? That scenario, is that part of what we are addressing now? Or do we, is this going to make that scenario any easier or more difficult, or is that a, a separate issue? I'll be discussing that just next when I go okay. over the drive through regulations, but yes, that is something that, right. um, that we are distinguishing between the two. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll move into that topic here. So, so, just quick, so Mayor Council, <coughs> sorry. I can't tell if I'm on. Uh, we're going to move forward then, if that's uh, the yeah. part of this presentation yeah. is to, because we've gone through, the, we brought it to you right. months ago. We went to PNZ. Now we're kind of giving one more briefing, and then it would show up next on a council agenda yeah. for approval. So for the, this is the specifically the outdoor yeah. seating areas. Okay. I'll just say affirmatively that I think that's one of the thing, good lessons from, right. uh, from <coughs> COVID is the, the whole alfresco right. or the emphasis on uh, outdoor eating, I think, is something we, okay. uh, is a good takeaway. Yes, Julie. <clears throat> when you guys did the drive-through meetings with the development community, was this also mentioned? Like, did you go through the whole presentation? Yes, so all three of these text amendments were included with those And was there any feedback on this one? Just a lot of positive feedback okay. from, from the development community about this and appreciation for considering these amendments. I hadn't heard anything on this particular thing, so I just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so moving into drive-through regulations, um, city staff was um, asked by city council to take a look at our current regulations. And this was in response to some community concern, concerns that we have heard about the um, kind of externalities or the um, effects or impacts of drive-through. So some of those are um, kind of the light, smell, and noise that are generated by these. Some of these concerns have to do with safety. Um, with multiple curb cuts, you often introduce um, more 
points of um, conflict there with pedestrians and bicycles. And then just kind of the emergence of what we're seeing is more of kind of a food court development where we have drive throughs just lining our arterial streets and kind of weakening the integrity of those community centers and um, how it affects those established businesses there. Um, so with this, we are looking at trying to minimize the clustering of drive throughs um, and protect the city's urban form and really protect the integrity of those neighborhoods. So going back to the, the meetings that we had, because we know there's been a lot of interest from the development community in this. So we did meet with our development advisory forum in April to discuss these amendments. We had a virtual open house in late June. We had another one in September and the following week we had an in-person open house. And then as, uh, as I've mentioned, we've had several one-on-one -on -one meetings with various developers and um, people from the industry. So based on these meetings and some of the feedback we've heard, we have, um, we're proposing some revisions to those original recommendations. So originally um, we had proposed to prohibit drive throughs in the neighborhood commercial district and to require a special use permit in the limited commercial district. Um, we are now recommending that um, it be required to have a CUP in both the neighborhood commercial and the limited commercial districts. And we are continuing with our recommendation as discussed before to define pickup windows and drive through facilities different. Um, so Mayor, to go back to your question on this item, um, this was one topic that was brought up by City Council very early on when we came to with discussions about really how we see that the impact of these two facilities are different. And currently in our code, there isn't a distinguishment between the two. Um, so we are proposing to, to separate those and the, the proposed regulations here would not apply to the pickup windows. So any of those facilities that just have a window but they don't have a, a menu board or an ordering box or someone out there placing orders because we really don't see that the, the stacking as, an, as intense with those facilities. Usually the pickup window facilities are more of like your banks or your pharmacies where or some restaurants do as well, have facilities where they call ahead and it's really just going to the window in a faster kind of service as opposed to showing up and placing your orders and, and waiting for them. Um, continuing on with, with the proposed changes here, um, based on the feedback from those meetings as well, we have made some, adjustment, some adjustments to the base standards that we are recommending. These base standards um, were allowed to be exceeded by a council use permit, um, but we are still recommending that we um, have no more than two drive throughs <clears throat> located adjacent to one another, and that if there is a third drive through, that it couldn't be placed within 750 feet of those two drive throughs, and that's to help prevent some of that clustering that we're seeing. Um, we have removed the recommendation for no more than two drive throughs in a group commercial center. And instead, um, we are looking at uh, creating kind of um, size categories for those. So based off the acreage of the group commercial center about the number of drive throughs that would be appropriate for that. But once again, that could be exceeded through the approval of a council use permit. And lastly, we have removed the, the recommendation that no more, drive no more than two drive throughs be located at an intersection. Can, why is that? I mean, if traffic and congestion are one of the byproducts of this, would, is it, it, would a traffic traffic engineer say, you know what, that's really, uh, well, I'll go back to the original question. Why did we strike that? That was based on um, feedback from our public meetings. Um, there, there was a lot of concern that this would limit the redevelopment of smaller parcels, kind of infill parcels along intersections. Um, a lot of feedback that they felt like it was too restrictive. It's so. part of a compromise in the conversation mm -hmm. pushback. So, but it is a concern, Mayor, to your point. And, uh, and I think, doesn't that kind of go back to your, Rachel, your point about by just saying no more than two, it kind of suggests irregardless of the size of the commercial area. So we want to, I think we want to go to more of a would you call it a tier or tiered approach? Yes. So maybe it's, we're striking that, but we may come back and say, but if it if it's only this size, it may be two, and if it's larger, it could be three. Does you see what I'm saying? 
Yes, and I, I, obviously all of this is very, fat, you know, dependent on the particular intersection because what's at an intersection yeah. is, are we talking about exactly on the hard corner or are we talking about two or three, you know, pads over? Does that qualify at the intersection? So I, I don't. Right, Mayor, Council. So when, when we looked at that regulation, <clears throat> it was just at the immediate corners. So you could have a scenario where you would have two drive throughs at each corner, but you would still be allowed to have another drive through next to it on each one of these. Mm -hmm. And then that's when that, that other provision about if you wanted a third one, that one would have to be separated by 750 feet. So there still was quite a bit of <coughs> allowance within that regulation. But as, as Mr. Brady said, this was part of kind of trying to reach a compromise and work with. Yeah. But and I'm all about compromise, and I guess I just want to, I'd love to find a place in Mesa or in the Valley somewhere that has more than two drive-ins on corners and go look at it and say, just get a feel for whether or not I would say, wow, yeah, this, I can see this is poor planning or this, to me, this seems like it's adding unnecessary congestion yeah. or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, Stapley and Baseline. But see, it's Gilbert on the other side, that's the yeah, I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the uh, give and take here, but uh, just for my own edification, I think I might, as, as this is kind of in the, the mix, I might be a little more observant as I drive around and see if I, uh, how I feel about having more than two drive throughs at a corner. Julie. Um, thank you so much for doing this, by the way. I know that staff has gone to a lot of extra work to make sure all the voices can be heard. And I, um, my biggest concern was this, is that we were just painting a big, broad brush over our huge, gigantic city and treating every intersection the same. So I actually like this, some of these um, compromises, we'll call them, just because every intersection is different, every area is different. And so different intersections and areas need different things. And so I appreciate, I, th I feel like this, puts us more into that category so that it's not just a blanket um, rule across the whole city. So that's that's what this feels like to me, that we're trying to look at things individually. Is that what, it, is that what this is doing? <laughs> um, I think we still have a good set of base standards that we can address the clustering, but as you said, this was, this was part of the compromise, but we're here to discuss this with council and, and go back and revise these as you see fit. So, so Mayor Council, actually what we're presenting to you today is what, where we've come so far. Right. We're not proposing to move forward yet. We know mm -hmm. there's more work to be done. So we're not suggesting this is ready to go, but we wanted to share with you where we are today. <clears throat> we still need to get back to the community with more details. We just kind of want to share, Here's a, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of, you know, different opinions about this and to, uh, Councilmember Spilsbury's point, um, we are having different experiences throughout the city, right? And I think we're trying to figure out how to make that work um, because we do have parts of the city where we have neighbors when we're doing development agreements, and I think of Longo, who didn't want any drive throughs right. right? And then I have council members also who are, whether it's infill or new development, who are seeing a concentration of drive throughs and that's becoming more problematic for, from a traffic standpoint. I think there's other parts of the city where we're trying to do infill that we would love to see more of those activities. So we're trying to figure out how we can administer that and make it work for every part of the city. So, because there's some parts of the city where people don't want another drive-through just because it's congestion or they um, they can't get to the other shopping or whatever destination that's behind there. And others, they would love to see more opportunity. So we're, we've got to figure out a way to kind of thread the needle on this that allows us to evaluate it um, that meets the needs of the, that part of town. And I'll just say, I, in traveling, when you go to some other places, <clears throat> even Gilbert, lots of restaurant, typical sit-down restaurant style places have drive throughs now. Like I'll say Cafe Rio, like a place like that that wouldn't be a drive through normally. I, Southern Utah and in Gilbert, they now have Cafe Rios with drive throughs right? Like it's just, I just see in my world, a lot of people want that convenience and especially if it's off a freeway, you know, you're running kids to practices or whatever. So you want the convenience of something right off the freeway. And so I, I feel like um, society is moving more towards drive throughs And so for us to like squash that, it's not gonna be a good thing. 
but in some cases it needs to be squashed maybe a little bit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's, like you said, that's the hard thing about it. Mr. Reddy. Let's see, uh, are we marrying kind of other municipalities, drive-through regulations, uh, or, or are our neighbors doing on drive-throughs? Other municipalities, um, Council Member Heredia, um, they don't have uh, the, the number of regulations that we're proposing here, um, but they are similar where in certain zoning districts they are restricting them. It's just hard to compare those because it's not apples to apples with their zoning districts right. about what they, you know, our NC is an equivalent to, you know, their downtown court. But we do know that in certain districts that they do restrict them. Okay. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Mayor. So, Rachel, when we get a new fast food facility coming in, um, w do you guide them in terms of um, the drive-through? Uh, there's one on Gilbert and, uh, I'm sorry, it's on McKellips and Power Road, and it's a popular food chain. They, you guys, somehow, they did a really good job on that because it's very popular. And um, they have huge lines going through, but they're, they're not, it's not getting into the street. It's the way they've designed it. So are you working with them when they come in and say, okay, this is what your drive-through needs to look like? Yeah, Mayor, Council Member Luna. So in our um, zoning ordinance, we do have regulations about stacking and about um, where a drive-through lane can be located in um, relation to the street. Right. Um, so we do spend a lot of time um, working with applicants and redesigning the site to make sure that the circulation um, is appropriate. Where we see more challenges is with the group commercial centers where um, they're permitted by right and we see just the, the clustering of them coming in. Right. And that ends up taking a lot of negotiations sometimes to, to prevent some of those um, externalities there. Okay, because there's one across the street that I think could has a potential to be problematic going into um, the commercial area. Uh, the, the, one, the one south of McKellops and the Power Road, you guys <clears throat> did a real good job in terms of the drive-through and how that's working. Yeah, and Mayor and Councilmember Luna, to add to this, we have heard some concerns about um, about more of those internal connections between mm -hmm. group commercial centers. So as part of these um, amendments, we are proposing um, a stacking to internal drives to help some of that as well. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, we address it very well within the site itself, but sometimes the stacking becomes an issue with the internal driveways. So that is something we're trying to address with this. Okay, great. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor. Thank you for listening and making revisions and trying to find that middle ground that works for all of us. I do like going back to a council use permit and make it flexible. Because I see some intersections are more arterial. You have traffic moving at 45 miles an hour. That is a different environment versus near a neighborhood that is a lot slower and what that means on the impact. Um, as far as I know, the developers depend heavily on a lot of drive throughs to not only for their return on investment, but getting traffic into the shopping area. So the businesses that are set back from there, they're depending on some of that traffic too. So looking like Council Member Luna mentioned, some traffic design standards or whatever, so we have those minimal impacts along the sidewalk and to intersections and pedestrians and designing that uh, would maybe accomplish some um, relief on, on uh, being able to accommodate that. Um, from the developer standpoint, they do want to see the text before anything is decided by council. I know we're, this is a preliminary, and but I'm assuming at one point we'll have the ordinance by text we can review before a final approval. Um, I think that's. Oh, and my other comment was, of course, the size of the development. <coughs> As we had mentioned before, there, a, a tight <coughs> corner may only be able to accommodate like one, but some of our corner developments are acres and acres, so that would ha have to be more flexible as far as numbers and, and such and you know, not apply universally depending on the size of the development. So I just wanted to bring that up. So 
looks good. Thank you for doing the work on it and look forward to seeing the text. All right. Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Mayor. So I appreciate you reaching out to the development community. I know several of my friends have reached out to me and then turned to you as well. And Donna, <clears throat> you know, one of the things I have in my district is that Country Club McKellips, we have five drive throughs And so I think clustering is an issue. And, you know, separating out the drive throughs I think is important that we do that and then have the uh, separation component, 750 feet does work for a lot of development because there's there's some also some infield parcels along in my district that developers are utilizing and uh, putting in drive-throughs in them and they're well off the corners they're not on the hard corners so help me understand on the hard corners are they typically zoned for a drive-through or do they need to be rezoned um, mayor council member freeman so they typically are commercially zoned so they are zoned for drive-throughs okay <clears throat> and Let's just say in the future, one of the drive-throughs chooses to go out of business and another drive-through chooses not to take over that, that parcel. What, what happens then if, if, say, a different business chooses to come into that drive-through? Say, a, a, I'll use a liquor store. Is that permitted by use on going from drive-through to a liquor store? Um, Mayor Councilman Freeman, I, I don't know off the top of my head if that use, where that use is allowed. Um, but I can talk in the sense of, I know we've had some questions about um, nonconformities and kind of the grandfathering of these. So if that, if that use is continued within, so if a, a drive through is to go out of business, uh, another one could come in within, within a year and still have established that use and it would be grandfathered under that. You know, I was just thinking of some provisions to protect that hard corner. Uh, if if the fast food chooses to go out of business, then another business to you know is coming in there that's not fast food or meets this, this criteria. What recourse do we have as a you know a council to or yourselves as staff to figure out? Well, is this use allowed? And do they you know do they have monument signs and the signage, all the things that are comprised of of uh, a corner because I just don't want to get in some conundrum down the road to where okay now the fast food goes out of business and other business comes in and then the neighborhood and the community doesn't like that business so yeah mayor council member Freeman I, I know I'm so, throwing a curveball at you <laughs> so we would look like that we would look at that situation like we do with any of our development it would be a matter of what the proposed use is, if it's allowed within that zoning district, um, what the proposed changes to the site were, and if that would trigger any sort of site plan modification or public hearing. Um, so I wouldn't really be able to address that without yeah. knowing the specific scenario. Right. I'm trying to give you one, but I'm not doing a good <laughs> job. I, I just know that if, if the use <coughs> changes on that corner from fast food to something else, what uh, protection to the neighborhood, to the to the developer, to, to all the ownership there, what happens there? And, yeah. and I, I just may be looking at that. Maybe the development community can provide some guidelines with that. Yeah, um, most likely you would have to go through some sort of site plan modification and, and would either be, no matter what, it would be reviewed by staff. But in some cases, it would be required to go back to planning and zoning or to city council, depending on the situation and the original approvals of that site. Okay. One last question. You never mentioned curbside pickup. Is curbside different than a pickup window? Or whether you run the, you know, when the restaurant runs out your food to wherever you parked at? Um, Council Member Freeman, so if, if those were located within parking stalls, that would not be included within these regulations. That was, would just be allowed. Just be allowed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, I'll just uh, add that I, I, I too appreciate the work that's gone into this. I think this is an issue for our day, right? I mean, with, with the pandemic and everything, and the way the traffic and development and just the household habits that we've all developed have, have evolved over the last few years, I think um, our sophistication in the way we design and, and use the drive-throughs is, uh, is changing. I, there are some examples uh, that a, a, a bad use of drive-throughs, you know, where, where people are uh, pedestrians and traffic and 
turning radiuses and the scrapes on the sides of walls and cars. And I mean, I, I think uh, we've gotten better at this. And so I think it is time to maybe upgrade. And uh, But it, one concern I have, is I think we, we, there are some somewhat a little bit of irrational complaints. Sometimes people just think that drive throughs are not a classy enough business for them and they are just kind of arbitrary in their criticisms of certain brands of drive throughs that they think are, you know, not snooty enough for their neighborhood. Uh, and I, I don't think, I, I just like to remind people, we're not in the business of picking winners and losers. We regulate traffic, we regulate uh, standards, and we, uh, we, we want it to be a good use of the engineering and to, to fit. But it's not the city's job to go out and recruit and, and dictate to developers, you know, the brands that they put on their developments. So I think we keep that, that discussion separate from traffic and engineering and uh, all of the, the good reasons to get in and regulate this. I'd like to make just one more comment. The, the subject of drive throughs didn't become really big until, in my opinion, until on these little coffee places that maybe they're like less than 500 square feet and 100% of their business is the drive through right? So the stacking of cars is enormous. <clears throat> they have an enormous volume, but they don't have the alternative of someone being able to go in, sit down, and that has really choked a lot of the Shopping centers created some traffic hazards, pedestrian hazards. I know we chose not to differentiate between those that are 100% drive-through versus those who have a footprint and a drive-through <clears throat> window. I'm just gonna put that out there um, just because I think some of the problems that we see are sometimes with those little tiny places that stack cars 30 deep almost 24 hours a day, so let's put that out there. Thank you. So don't, don't we have some standards, though, for that, like the certain uh, one that David Luna mentioned? Is it a big deal if we mention brand names? Are we not supposed to do that or something? Well, you know, I just... I said Cafe Rio. Anyways, the one he was talking about that we all know and love, like, they made, when they created that, they had a bigger... Um, site so that they could incorporate all those lines and the one you're talking about one of the ones you're talking about on like gilbert and mckellips for example they're moving off the corner and moving down west mm -hmm. off of mckellips so that they have more room for all of those cars like do we have standards for that or or requirements when when, when they know they're going to have huge drive-through lines because i know we don't differentiate between brands but there are some that create more drive-through lane uh, traffic Mayor, um, Councilwoman Spillsbury, so we don't have regulations about the minimum lot size for certain uses, but those get those get established through your setbacks, through minimum open space. Um, we do have regulations on the stacking distance between the windows, mm -hmm. and so they get they get um, looked at through those lens, as opposed to having needing a minimum lot size for a use. All right. Well, this is uh, we're. we're this, well, I look forward to continuing to work with you on this. Thank you for the work. Okay. All right. So, Mayor um, and Council. So, based on this, staff's next steps would be to go back and finalize this. Um, and based on your direction, we would be going back to Planning and Zoning Board for the outdoor seating areas on October 26th for their recommendation and possibly to November 16th for the drive through regulations for their recommendations and then coming back to you for action on December 8th. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank Rachel. You. Thank you. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Brady. <clears throat> I apologize. Can we just go back to the agenda? There is one item I did. I, I went over. I just couldn't find it. It's 5D and it's a self city property to Union Pacific, and I think it would be just interesting for the council to know that's part of the pirate program, and Beth um, just has a few, just two slides, just I, I share that with you. I think um, it's just important to know how, what the city is doing and selling property to support the yeah. pirate program and how that, how this um, cut through or the rail coming through the property is going to affect it, so. 
I apologize, I skipped over that one. No. So that's one of the slides. Five D. <clears throat> so I'll just start out with this slide. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Um, I'll start out with this slide to um, kind of acclimate you to where I'm talking about. Um, the Union Pacific Railroad is uh, wanting to build a spur line from uh, west of Sossaman, south of Pecos, over and along the Pecos alignment to CMC Steel at Meridian Road. Um, CMC will be one of their first customers. Development Services told me last week they are in with their 60% plans for review, and they want to have their property acquisition done by the end of the year, uh, this year. We are in kind of a key location. In 1942, 80 years ago, we bought 35 acres of property along um, the northwest corner of Pecos and Sossaman, kind of where the cursor is right there. So that's our property. And that's what we are looking at uh, selling right away through. You can see on this slide as it will cross through diagonally through our property. So I'm going to go to a a larger slide that kind of blows it up. We own 35 acres in this location and they're gonna be crossing us here. So they want 4.8 acres of right of way. Um, they appraised at 650 a square foot plus about $401,000 in severance damages because they cross our side at a diagonal. Um, so the sale will come in at about 1.78 million on this property. Uh, they want to be closed and have all their property acquisition done by the end of the year. It does leave just over 19 acres on the northwest corner of our property that we are considering for a future transfer station and recycling facility in Southeast Mesa. We made, made sure there was enough, it left us mm -hmm. enough uh, property to still consider that as a future opportunity. So. Okay. And then we would probably also look at selling that the, yeah, down there and um, we're aware of that and looking for a proper uh, possibility for a logistics center and other development out there, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just curiosity, is, does the, the fa having the rail uh, spur on this property increase the value of the property because uh, a manufacturer or someone, you know, who who values the, the, that service, is that? That's what we're gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, so I guess my question is, I, I, I'm, I'm all about, I'm all about the uh, the recycling facility. Yes. But uh, is it is this property now too valuable for that purpose? I mean, would it be better to sell this to someone who wants to be you know, a manufacturer that wants to have access to the rail, uh, or maybe that's maybe our recycling facility would like nice, to have access. Yeah, to the rail. Mayor. The nice thing about this location for the recycling center, we've actually just uh, have made an agreement with the town of Gilbert that we're going to both work on. Um, uh, drawings, uh, preliminary drawings to go to 15% of what this w could be in the future because there's a possibility, there's a strong possibility that they would join with us. And because it's on the southeast part of Mesa, mm -hmm. it works for us, but it also works very well for them. So okay. from that strategic standpoint, uh, bringing in a partnership with Gilbert for the <coughs> materials recycling center and, and the uh, transfer station, which is um, could be very important. Um, yeah. This site does work very well for us in that perspective. And Mayor, we are uh, rapidly developing Pecos Road right now. We are running out of property because we're also looking for stormwater okay. basins in this area. And it is hard to find properties large enough. Yeah. I do know we have another department that's interested in the other corner as well okay. for a, a facility ultimately. Well, so we, we'll have to talk about that <laughs> too. <laughs> Governmental use is, is important news. So yeah, I know this is a very strategic property and I guess we, it's thank you to the city council 85 years ago for buying this. <laughs> yeah. uh, Can you imagine what it was like back then? It was the middle of It was the middle of no, for sure, yeah. We, we don't even have any record of what we paid for it, but I'm sure Mr. Kennington's back there smiling when he sees these numbers today. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, well, the, I, I think it's, it'd be, it's yeah. great to get more updates on Pirate because we, we talk about it behind the scenes a lot, but I'm, I'm anxious for the, the public to learn about this more because it is an issue. Uh, there are con some concerns you know, about traffic out there, but I think we need to help people understand what a, how important this is to the industrial users out in this area and, and uh, how hard they've worked to get to this point on it. 
Mayor had a question. Yes. So to that point, what is it zoned now? Um, probably ag, probably. It's probably it ag that? property it's right ag. now. Yeah. So I have to check, but I don't have, have that. We haven't. We haven't done anything in the last. <laughs> it's just eight, sat eight there for years. eighty years. <laughs> eighty years. <laughs> In perpetuity. But the general plan for that area is is what? Remind me. Oh, well, probably down here is probably industrial, right. I imagine. It's all industrial. Yeah. Mayor, Councilmember Freeman, that would be employment. employment. It's employment. Okay. All right. Recycling centers have a lot of good jobs, I think. Oh, you think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do. All right. Any questions on this, Council? Thank you for Thank you. Uh, alerting us to that, Mr. Ritty. All right, any, uh, moving on then, next item on our agenda is item three, to acknowledge receipt of various meetings and minutes. Is there a motion to that effect? Thank you, Mr. Luna, seconded by Ms. Spilsbury. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, that passes unanimously. Uh, next is current events and conferences attended. I know we've had a busy week, Mr. Luna. Uh, thank you, Mayor, we had a busy uh, week. Uh, last weekend we had to celebrate Mesa, so Andrea, thank you for your hard work and your staff. Uh, we had a great turnout. Um, how many people? How many people do you think? Are there? How many people are saying ten to thirteen thousand. Yeah, but you But you expanded it a little further. It looks like so. We did. It was based on where we saw parking. Yeah. So anyway, good job and great, great attendance, and appreciate the hard work of your staff for doing that. Uh, let's see. Um, attended the new burn building at Mesa Fire Training Facility. That was pretty cool, and they put some cool videos together. And I think. Uh, my colleague's going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, also um, attended a, a round table with local businesses along with my colleague here um, with uh, Congressman Greg Stanton. So that was a real positive event. And of course, uh, we had the Cesar Chavez unveiling ceremony at uh, Eagles Park. But I do want to thank Andrea for leading the charge, as well as Anna and Kevin from the PIO office and Tan Tanya Gerard and Sarah Miranda, and of course, uh, uh, MHN for putting together such a great and exciting program, and the mariachis, and we had a real good turnout. So thanks, city staff, for, for being there, for being part of this wonderful celebration, and uh, it was great to have Julie Chavez Rodriguez among us, as well as my colleagues that were in attendance. And thank you uh, for supporting the, this effort. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Who would like to go next? Thank you. Well, it's been a busy time since we didn't have study session last week. Um, on Tuesday, October 4th, I attended an ASU. I was on a panel at an ASU class um, with, uh, on cross-sector leadership. I was on a panel with Ron Williams uh, covering the private sector, Liz Paulus, a nonprofit, and I was on public, and there's another gentleman on the military sector. It's a really great class. And in fact, today I have one of the students from the class shadowing me, Daria Whitaker. And Daria, do you want to stand up, say hello? Or I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassing her. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate her interest in uh, the public service. So um, later that day, the mayor and I am. I think it was just the two of us attended the Hope's Fry Bread rib cutting. They have a new location opening their doors on, I think it's 144 South Mesa Drive, just south of First Avenue. So we're excited to have them in the downtown area. On the next day on October 5th, I attended a coffee with a cop with the Central substation as well as Fiesta. Uh, at the Central uh, Coffee, was at Refuge Coffee, I believe that's the name of it, on um, Alma School and University. And Officer Height was actually running the drive through windows. So thank you to all the officers that showed up and did more <laughs> than just have a coffee. And uh, it was a great event. Um, on Sunday, I attended the Aspire graduation. And that's an academy camp for girls 14 to 18. Introduces them to careers in firefighting and policing policing and other emergency response positions. And, and women are extremely underrepresented in these fields. And so I was so happy and thank you to everybody who was involved in running another class. Um, uh, these girls were inspiring, energetic, and um, I appreciate that we have this program in Mesa. On Monday, I attended a Courageous Creativity course that was set up at the Mesa Arts Center for 
the school's <coughs> understanding the use of creativity and arts and learning. Um, There's some interesting statistics that uh, employers rated creativity as a in their top three of skills of what they want from employees as we move into the 21st century. And so keeping that alive within our education system is extremely important. And of course, we recognize that also in our creative economy and the innovation district in downtown Mesa. Um, on Tuesday, I um, attended the Arizona Forward Thrive in 2035 conference. And the mayor was on a panel talking about uh, things that we need to do as cities and opportunities in order to meet sustainability goals and uh, into a new economy. I attended a workshop on circular sustainability and entrepreneurship and how taking materials, recycling them and have them into a new product or a new use in a local environment, um, I think was very beneficial to learn about that and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Freeman. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight's going to be my community safety fair over at Fire Station 206. And so if you like free food, free flu shots, uh, free shedding, shredding of documents, please come. So we've reached out to the community. One of the, the highlights to this really excited me was a family contacted me, well, actually contacted Katie Brown, that said, we would like to cook for you. And we asked, well, nobody just says we'd like to cook for you. So we asked why. And they said in 2006, their family was involved in a house fire. Their house completely burned down. They barely made it out of the lives, seven people. And they're just so thankful for Mesa Fire and Mesa Police and all the things that were done to help them become, you know, survivors of a house fire. And so they like to promote Smoke detectors were a key thing, warning for them. Their smoke detectors went off, and they're at 2 o'clock in the morning. You go, well, what's going on? And they said, we didn't even know our smoke detectors worked. So with that said, I would encourage each of us to check our smoke detectors. You know, just push the button and see if they work. And when you travel, I do that. I make sure everything works. So this community safety fair is very important to the community, to our neighborhoods, and reaching out. So <laughs> next week, I'll let you know how well it does. But that's just one of the highlights why I like to include a, a safety fair. And thank you, Mr. Brady, for the staff and everybody helping because it is beneficial. And, and the neighborhoods like to reach out. Our code compliance, uh, fire and life safety will be there, as well as a lot of the other uh, departments. So thank you. And I'll end with that. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, amen to everyone, uh, all those great activities. Uh, I, I can't help but give an additional shout out to Hope's Fry Bread. Uh, just because it, it's, it's fun and exciting to have uh, a Native American uh, family-owned uh, business with great food, uh, be, you know, join the downtown uh, food scene. So uh, can't recommend it enough. The food is, is terrific, and I, I hope they can keep up with the demand because I think it's going to be very well received. All right, Mr. Brady, what does our schedule of future meetings look like? Thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder, <clears throat> we'll... Um, have a council meeting um, uh, this Monday, October 17th. Uh, I think council has a photo right before that at 445 under the uh, purple ribbon oh, yeah. out front. Oh, and right. then you'll move, come over oh, here at 515, Domestic Violence Month. Yes. Oh, purple. Purple version. I have to do a show today, but to, uh, from again, Monday, just remind you today, <laughs> for Monday, purple, I think, is the yeah. preference of, of color to wear. So that's uh, Monday. And then also um, this Sunday, uh, the city of Mesa will be um, participating in the Phoenix Pride Parade. Um, that's um, from 10 a.m. to noon, and it's um, in Phoenix. So I think there's some of the members of council participating mm -hmm. in that. I know we have yeah. several staff that will be there also. Great. So thank you. Mr. Smith, the, the topic of domestic violence uh, month that we're going to wear purple for, I know the city prosecutors and city attorneys yeah. events. Did, did we mention that up Ben already? Did I not hear that? So, uh, Mayor and Council, we haven't. Uh, we're going to talk about it Monday night, but okay. it is Wednesday, October 19th uh, at 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. at Pioneer Park. Yeah. So we'll have um, some great speakers there, and we'll also have nonprofits there uh, for people that want more information or that need, uh, need help. Okay. Thank you. That's always a very... Uh, very poignant event. 
All right, council, if there's nothing else, that concludes our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mr. Luna, seconded by Ms. Spilsbury. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, we are adjourned.